It's back. After almost two years of being blocked by the government, Apple just re-enabled the blood oxygen sensor on the Apple Watch, but it's not the same as it was. Just a quick recap for those that don't remember or maybe even never knew, the blood oxygen feature of the Apple Watch was removed back in December of 2023. It all happened with a lawsuit with Massimo. They had been fighting back and forth for a while. Massimo finally won one, but it was only due to the international Trade Commission, the ITC. Now, this ban only affected the US and it was basically an import ban. So Apple could no longer import Apple Watches with the blood oxygen sensor on the watch or at least enabled in the watch. Apple fought back and forth on this and there was a temporary unbanned for just a couple weeks in January, but then the ban went back into effect. During the bans, like this was right around Christmas time, Apple had to remove the watches from their website. The only watch they had listed on the website at that point was the SE because it didn't have that blood oxygen sensor in it to begin with. Once they figured out a workaround that was approved by disabling the blood oxygen, they were able to start importing those watches back. Now, it wasn't for a few months after that that people really felt the pain because Amazon, Best Buy, any retailer that had watches with the blood oxygen sensor in it could still sell it. It was just Apple that that part affected. Once they ran out of stock though, then Apple was only able to supply them with watches with Series 9 and Ultra 2s that did not have that blood oxygen sensor enabled. Since then, Apple has been fighting back and forth with Massimo. Back in, I think, late last November, they did win some battles of Massimo infringing on their products. So it's just been this back and forth trying to get enough stuff to get the sensor back enabled on our Apple Watches. But as of today, Apple did reintroduce the blood oxygen sensor in a redesigned form. So if you haven't already, make sure you have your iPhone updated to iOS 18.6.1 and your watch updated to 11.6.1. This will re-enable that sensor. So this affects the Series 9, the Series 10, the Ultra 2, all of those that have been purchased after the ban. Go ahead and take a look at how it worked before. This is an Ultra 1 and it works still fine, no issues there. All you have to do is you go into the blood oxygen app and you hit start and it will start taking a reading of your blood oxygen. Now underneath, you can't see right now, but it has the red lights are coming on and it's sending those red lights through my skin and getting somehow, like this this tech is just crazy. But it returned, my blood oxygen level is 97% right now. Now it does that, but it also runs in the background on your old watches. Now the new system does not run in the background anymore. So that is the hit one. So other than that, the other issue is that it doesn't work the same as it did. Now I have a series 10 that has it blocked but sadly, I am running watchOS 26 on this one, and as of the last time I checked it, it just doesn't work. So this is what happened after the ban. Any new watches that you got, you just got this message saying the Blood Oxygen app is no longer available. Learn more in the Health app on your iPhone. And in there, I believe it talks about the lawsuit and why it can't be enabled currently. I'm sure you're still wondering how it works now. So as I mentioned, it doesn't work in the background anymore, so you have to manually go into the app and hit the start button. Once you hit that, it will start taking the reading just like before, but the big change here now is the fact that you will not see the results on your wrist. This data is now sent to your iPhone where it gets fully processed, it figures out what your blood oxygen is, and then it will display the results in the respiratory section of the health app. So your watch now is just the sensor and then all the operations happen on the iPhone, which is a major shift, but it was the shift that had to happen to dodge this import band on the Apple Watches with the blood oxygen sensor on them. Obviously, this is not the best solution. The best solution would be to have it the way we had it before, but Apple had to make these changes. The government did approve them, so we were able to get around that Massimo Band. I'm sure Massimo is not happy at all about this. They would rather Apple start paying them a ton of money to get this sensor working the way it was before, but Apple still doesn't feel like they infringed 
on their patents. So Apple's continuing to fight that. What's this mean for the Series 11 and the Ultra 3? We really don't know that yet. Apple may have come up with a completely different sensor to detect your blood oxygen levels a completely different way. And if that's the case, then they could probably do it more like they did before. This is just a great workaround on those devices that have been banned in the past. So just to clarify things up a little bit, who does this actually affect? Well, if you already had the blood oxygen sensor working fully on your watch, you're good, nothing changes. So if you're outside of the US and it was working fine, it's gonna continue working the way it did. It's still gonna do the background readings. You're still gonna be able to see the info on your watch. This is only for people that have had that sensor disabled. So if you're in the US and you have a Series 9, a 10 or an Ultra 2 that were bought after the ban, and when you opened up the blood oxygen app, you got that little message like I just showed you, then you're gonna actually have it start working. It's just gonna be a little bit different than what it was before. You're gonna have to look at the iPhone to actually get the results. So Apple did the right thing here. They got it working for those that didn't have it, and they kept it working the way it already was for those that did. But all this really points to how crazy the future of health features on our smart devices are gonna be. Because Apple is currently working on blood pressure. They enabled sleep apnea last year, and they're also supposedly working on the blood glucose monitoring. All this stuff could be patent infringement. You never know. Apple gets sued all the time over this kind of stuff. They've had legal battles over the AFib detector in the past. They won those. But this is just crazy that so many companies fight back and forth on these life-saving features. All this info that really helps and saves lives and companies are fighting back and forth because they feel like they came up with the idea first or they got to this point first. And it's just, it's crazy. So I'm hoping the governments can come together, figure out a solution to kind of get this stuff settled before the devices even come out. Like I feel like, I know tech moves fast and obviously government and everything else does not, but we need to figure out a better way because we lucked out, I feel like with the blood oxygen sensor because it was banned, but it wasn't removed from any devices that already had it. But that could not be the case in the future, we could have a feature that is actually being forced to be completely removed from our devices. So hopefully the system can figure out itself and get better in the very near future because these features are so great to have. It's so awesome to have all this data that we never had before unless we went to hospitals and paid all this money, which is just crazy how expensive things can be, at least especially here in the US. But I would love to hear from you. Did this workaround actually get this feature back on your watch and are you excited about it? And if you're one of those people that have been holding out on upgrading, is this enough? Is this workaround enough to get you to upgrade? Because I know you're out there. I've seen the comments. A lot of people keep commenting about, well, I'm not gonna upgrade the Apple Watch unless it has the blood oxygen feature on it. To where if this is what is in the Series 11 and Ultra 3, if that's all that we have that works in those, is this enough to get you to actually upgrade? Are you still holding out for the full feature that the old watches had? Also, if you're interested in how watchOS 26 is going, I have a video right here on Beta 6, or if you'd like to see the first video I did when this was originally banned, I have that one right here for you. Thank you so much for watching. God bless.